Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well out there today. Now, one of the cool aspects about iOS development that I personally like is that by just using a couple of lines of code, you can execute animations inside of your UI, right? And furthermore, if you chain together these animations, you can achieve some really cool effects. And I would like to demonstrate to you what one of these effects will look like by going through this sample walkthrough application over here, so nothing too special yet. And the moment I click inside of the app, you'll see the chain animation kind of sliding over to the left and then sliding up to the top as well as kind of fading out, kind of like that. So the way this works is we slide over the top label to the left by translating the X value, and then we translate the Y value once the initial animation is complete. All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up all of this by first showing you how to set up the labels so that they are vertically aligned in the center like this, and then we'll look at how to execute these two animations together one after another. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and start coding inside of Xcode right now. Okay, everybody, we are now inside of good old Xcode. And what I've set up so far is just a brand new single view application that doesn't do a whole lot. All we have is a view controller class. If we wanted to change the background color to something like dot yellow, we can run our code now and we'll see a blank yellow screen inside of the simulator over here. Uh, hopefully this is not confusing. It should be pretty straightforward what is going on. So let's move on to the creation process of this application over here. And uh, the first thing we need to do is to set up some of the UI to contain two labels, uh, the top one up here and then a smaller label right below it. And then we'll execute the chained animation kind of like that. All right, so first step is to set up UI and let's create something called a title label and set it to a UI label, let body label, body label equals UI label and construct it with the empty constructor. And down below, we'll have to add it into the UI somehow. And the way that this works is you need to vertically center this guy inside of the entire view controller somehow. And the easiest way of doing this is to use a stack view component. So just create one like so, and we'll use the arranged subviews constructor. Okay, so this guy is an array of UI views. So let's create an array. Let's pop in the title label and also the body label like so. And the next thing you have to do is to set the axis on the stack view. And I'll set it to vertical because it defaults to horizontal. And then now we need to add this stack view into the view controller's view, which is what this guy is. So let's say add some view of this stack view component and we should be okay, but you won't really see the stack view unless you set up a frame on it. So let's use a CG rect and give it a frame with this CG rect value of let's see zero, zero with can be maybe 200. Uh, the height will say 400 and we can try to run this, but I don't think we'll see anything just yet. So we still see our blank yellow screen. And the reason why we don't see these labels is because they don't really have a background color or any text to it just yet. So let me say background color of the title label to be red and the body label, we can use a background color of dot green. So we have red, yellow, and green for the primary colors here. And uh, here we go. We have this red block and we are not seeing the green just yet for the body label. So why don't I do some additional setup here of body label dot text equals something like body. And why don't we set the title labels text as well to be title. I think that's going to allow the body label to show up right below the title label. So that's pretty much what our stack view component looks like with a width of 200 and a height of 400. And the reason why the red label is showing up so tall is because the stack view just decides to kind of use one of the sub views to span the entire axes. And in this case, it's vertical. So that's kind of why the red guy is so tall. And we'll fix this in just a little bit. Why don't I now kind of show you how to center the stack view inside of the view controller instead of kind of pinning it to the top left corner. 
And the way we are going to do this is to use something called Auto Layout. And let me just kind of show you how that works by first enabling Auto Layout by setting this translates auto resizing mass into constraints. Uh, set that property to false. So this guy enables Auto Layout. And now we kind of have to decide where we want to put this stack view inside of this view controller. So I'm going to put it in the center. So let me just swipe back over here. So I'm going to center it over here in the X axis and also the Y axis. So let me show you how that works by saying stack view dot center X anchor. And we'll just constrain it equal to something. And this guy is pretty simple. We'll say view controllers view dot center X anchor and make sure to set is active equals to true. And very similar to the X anchor, we'll say center Y anchor constrained to the view controllers view dot center Y anchor. And also set this guy to be active like so with is active equals to true. And before you can do all this, you wanna make sure to move the view add sub view line to somewhere up here because you can't set constraints until it's inside of the, uh, the ancestor view over here. Okay, so let me just remove this one comment and now you can kind of see the stack view being centered directly inside of the view controller, right? And if you modify the text inside of these two labels to be like that, so let's just say body, 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 run our code again, you'll see the changes kind of affect how the stack view is laid out. So because the text is super large, it kind of spans to the left edge on the right edge like that. If you put some new lines in here, so new line, new line, you'll kind of see the green label sort of expand to be a taller height. And that's kind of what you get. So you don't see the new lines because body label dot number of lines you want to set that equal to zero so that you can enable multi lines for your UI label components. And that's kind of what you get. And you'll notice that it doesn't really matter how tall these two labels are. It's still going to be centered perfectly inside of your view controller. And so let's say I change the title labels dot font equals UI font. And I want to use something called Futura or Futura, however you pronounce this. And let's give it a size of 34. So the title label is going to be really large now. And again, this entire stack view is still going to be centered directly inside of the view controller's view. So moving right along here, I would like to modify the title labels text to say something else that makes more sense. So let me change this to welcome to company XYZ. And I would like to also enable multi-line for the title label. So number of lines equal to zero, kind of like what we did for the body label. And while I'm here already, let's modify this to say, hello there. You know, thanks so much for downloading our brand new app and giving us a try. You know, make sure to leave us a good review in the app store. So I'm just making this message to be really long so we'll see the changes when I run the application right now. And uh, we'll start to see a problem where the stack view right now is currently having a width that is larger than the simulator. And the reason why that's happening is because the width is being determined by the text labels inside of it. And to fix this, I'll actually give the width anchor of my stack view, so width anchor, I'll constrain this to the view controller's view instead. So let's say constrain, see where are you, constraint. And we'll use this one down below with this constant value over here. And I'll show you what that does in just a little bit. This guy will say view controller's view with anchor and the constant will just use a value of zero for now. All right, so giving this stack view a width anchor, you'll see that the text labels inside of it will kind of be bound from the left and right edge of your view controller, giving it a much nicer layout. And so if you want to introduce some padding onto your uh, text labels on the left and right, you can just change this constant value to something like negative 100. And the moment you run your application, you'll get the app to have the spacing that we have inside of the finished version of our application over here. So there's 50 on the left side and 50 on the right side. 
that's kind of what the negative 100 does. All right, so that's pretty much all we have to do to set up the UI. And we're kind of now ready to introduce the animation inside of our application so that we can do that. So we can do that inside of view to load, but you can kind of see it's really messy right now. So why don't we clean this up a little bit by refactoring this code. So extract method, we'll call this guy instead of labels or whatever the heck you want. And down below, let's refactor this as well. So right click, refactor, extract method. It'll pop up there somewhere and we'll call this setup stack view. Sounds pretty good. We will remove the yellow background color and let's also remove these two background colors and run our code one more time. You'll see just a white background with black text, kind of like that. And if you wanted to introduce some spacing between these two labels, you can modify the stack view.spacing equals, I don't know, eight. That will introduce some vertical gap between those two labels. And that's kind of what you get. All right, so good start for us. And now is the time for the fun, so fun animations. And the way I'm going to execute the animation is to handle a tap gesture recognizer, kind of like that. So a tap gives us the animation. And the way you do this is to say view.add gesture recognizer. And we will use a UI tap gesture with a target of self and a selector will be pound selector, handle tap animations, whatever you wanna call this method, you just have to create it down below as at objective C, file private function, and handle tap animations. So we're going to say print, let's see, animating, and run our code right now, just to make sure this print statement shows up at the very bottom. So click, click, click. You'll see the animating text down below over there. So now the question is, how exactly do I perform this animation right over here? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We just have to make a chain of animations in two simple steps. The first step is to translate this label to the left a little bit. And then once that animation is complete, we'll translate it all the way up to the top to get this effect. All right, so sounds pretty good. Let me show you how to do that inside of handle tap animations. Let's say UI view. I'm going to animate with some kind of spring thing, the motion of a physical spring and double click into that. The duration, you can use a value of 0 0.5, delay zero. And the damping, I'll use a 0 0.5. Velocity, I'll use a 0 0.5 as well. And that kind of gives us this springy animation where it bounces a little bit to the left side. And so the options, let's use curve ease out to give it an acceleration effect. And then let's hit enter for animations and hit enter for the completion. For this bool thing, just use underscore because we don't want to actually care about it. And now let's fill in the animation block on line 54. Okay, so to translate this label, the title label to the left a little bit, that side, we simply have to say self.titlelabel.transform equal to some kind of new CG affine transform. And this guy, luckily for us, comes with a translation X and Y. And why don't we translate this negative 30 and the Y value, we'll just use a value of zero and run our code now you'll see what this animation does it's going to push the label to negative 30 like that so pretty simple and pretty straightforward right so once this animation is complete we're going to execute a second animation right over here so let's just use the same one and uh, the duration will use 0 0.5 delay is zero and i'll use one and one for damping and velocity and for options, I'll use curve ease out again because I still want acceleration. And for the animations, we'll hit enter again. And so what exactly do we want to animate to? Well, this guy has to go upwards. So what I mean is it has to animate upwards like that. So pretty easy if you just apply another transform. So self.titlelabel.transform. And this guy, I'm going to use the title labels current transform, which is this and I'll translate it by a value of x is zero and a value of, let's say, negative 150 will bring it up, I believe. 
And for this guy, you don't want to actually do anything during the completion. You could if you want, but I don't really care about it, so I'll just remove it from the code. And let me run my application one more time. So hit that, it'll bring that up over there. All right, so this doesn't seem like it's going high enough, so let me change this to 200. And I might as well modify the alpha as well. So alpha, alpha, let me spell that correctly, alpha equals zero. And that's going to fade the label on the second step of the animation. So clicking onto that, you'll see the label kind of fading out, right? So that's exactly the two-step process of performing this chained animation. And the only thing that you have left to do is to animate this guy as well. So the way that is done is a little bit trickier. Well, not too tricky, but there's a slight delay in which this guy is going to animate to the left right after this guy starts its animation. So there's a small delay. So all you gotta do is to just repeat this animation again. So let me just copy all this stuff, paste that in there. And this guy will use the body label and we will say body label, body label, body label, and run our code again. And you'll see the animation occur at the same timeline. So click on that. Both these labels kind of animate at the same exact time. So why don't we introduce a delay of 0.5 for the body label animation, and you'll see a stagger in between the animations. So click there, and it kind of goes like that, and it fades out sort of as a two-step process as well. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on chained animations. If you are interested in more about Swift development, make sure to check out the latest course on building out this podcast application over here, where we also talk about stack views and animations that kind of look like that. Now, if you want to download the source code for today's video, make sure to check out the link down below as well. That's going to be it for today. I'll see you in the very next video. Bye-bye, guys.